and they pass generally in the, in the entire district. Um, the Supervisors and Mayors Association has been, has been addressing the issue of what we refer to as chargebacks or the election costs that the county is um, saying they would like the towns to be responsible for. Um, we as a group have been protesting that the county costs should be paid for by the county tax authority, uh, not passed down to the towns whose budgets are stretched as far as they can go, and some towns even farther than they really can go. Um, we all need assurance that the Board of Election budget has been thoroughly analyzed and trimmed to its bare bones before any decision can be acceptable about how any costs will be handled. Um, Generally, as an, as an organization, we're opposing unfunded mandates. Um, obviously, the costs for services have to be paid somewhere in the government. But what the county wants to do is to put the burden of tax on the towns so that the county administrators can claim they are keeping county taxes low. Um, we all wind up paying one way or another anyway. Um, the association has also written to the governor and the state assembly and the senate urging them to pass legislation that will make unfunded mandates in any arena illegal, whether from the county or state. Um, the Northern Duchess Alliance will be holding a forum on the 16th of June in Tivoli on preserving historic sites, if anybody is interested. And in the fall, there's a forum on preserving clean water in the face of development. This is a really important issue for us here in Stanford, as it is all over the county not just in relation to any, develop that, any development that can happen within our town's borders, but because development in neighboring towns could also affect our water supply, both the amount of it and the quality of it. Just think about what's going to happen when the Durst development starts going in in Pine Plains or the other Pine Plains development where there are huge, hundreds of houses going in. The aquifer serves us all. Um, the Wappingers Creek watershed is also the lifeblood of Stanford. It's our water supply and it's our environmental asset. For the entire county, July is being designated Watershed Awareness Month. And the week of the 5th to the 11th is called Creek Week, which is very hard to say. <laughs> With several great, that's my biased opinion, but great activities for anyone who might be interested. There's going to be a bird walk through Buttercup Sanctuary with experts to point out species. If you don't know anything about birds and might be interested, there'll be a history night to learn about the role that the watershed and the creeks have played both in the community's social life um, and also in our commercial past with all of the mills that existed um, in, in the county. And there'll be a celebration walk to explore a wetland habitat. And there'll be others. I'm going to post these notices um, for all of these things on the bulletin board in town hall. And I will make sure that there are links on the town's website if anybody is interested or want to think about attending. Um, that's it for, my, for what I have to report. The next, the next issue is, is a public hearing. No, the next issue is pr privilege of the floor. Before we start privilege of the floor, I'd like to make a few comments. Um, it would be very helpful if, if public comments were about issues and not about personalities. There is no place for personalities at a town board meeting. Um, privilege of the floor is not a time for discussion with town board members or among members of the audience. It is a time for, for someone who wants to make a comment which will be publicly recorded. Um, and any comments can be made later after the meeting. Discussions can be. It may spur something. But privilege of the floor is not the time for that. Please keep your um, comments for under five minutes. And if you don't mind, it would be nice if you stated your name and address, but you do not have to. All right. So, uh, privilege of the floor for any comments from the public. Yes? Mike Schaefer from 21 Decker Road. Um, at the last regular board meeting, there was a issue brought up about the need for a new computer in the supervisor's office. 
Um, it was then decided to make a special case of this at another board meeting because there was need for a time for homework to be done about prices of computers. And then at the special board meetings, people were missing. And one of the people missing was the one who was supposed to be doing the homework and hadn't gotten the homework in. This resulted in an off-the-top couple of estimates from people who were resisting a normal, average, regular price for the computer that's needed in the supervisor's office. And now this is on the agenda for tonight. Um, I just wish to register that I would like to see something happen with this computer tonight. And no wrangling over it. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments from the floor? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Joe Norton, 232 Hobbs Lane. I was at the workshop the other night and something came up that really uh, hit me. Um, it's been a while, but you were looking at the retirement system of the state and the requirements of hours and jobs, etc. And what really affected me was when you mentioned that the town clerk's office was still <laughs> submitting four hours to the <laughs> state and that was the number that they were using 20 years ago. So I would ask the board, when you go to the budgetary process, which mm -hmm. is, I guess, shortly around the corner, I mean, take a really good look at the uh, county, uh, at the town clerk's office, because mm -hmm. those were the hours that worked 20 years ago. And since then, we've changed a lot. 20 years ago, it wasn't even a computer there. It just came in sometime. And I think four hours is really low. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other comments? Okay, um, thank you both. Um, <coughs> I'd like to make a motion that we go out of our meeting and into a public hearing, or do we have to do two motions separately? Anything no. you want to do is fine. Okay, we go out of, out of our meeting and into the public hearing for proposed local law number two. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right, this is a public hearing for proposed local law number two. There are copies of it there. It is a local law to amend uh, chapter 96, uh, fire prevention and building construction administration for the requirement to provide suitable access for emergency vehicles. Um, this came up during the winter when there was a very long private drive filled with snow and there was a fire at the end of the, of the drive in a house and the fire department got there to the fire call and couldn't get up the drive and had to call the highway department to come plow it. Um, so this is in response to that. Are there any comments? Yes. Jan Rio, 47 Church Lane. I haven't had a chance to read this, but like, we can have as many laws as we want, but like, I'm concerned about the enforcement. Like, mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't do it, then what do you, do you find them and then that's a lien on their property? Or if you, what if you have a senior citizen? That, like, how does the enforcement work? What's the teeth in this? I'll let our attorney answer that. Primary issue is for safety is access. So right. in a situation, the town may have to provide access, may have to literally go in and plow the road or get there. The cost of that under this local law is then going to be uh, passed back to the owner. So the owner is going to be charged for that cost by the town. So essentially you're going to have a situation where the town is not doing it quote unquote for free um, and they're going to basically be reimbursed for the actual cost to open this up. And that's what the main design of this is for. Okay. 